Hey everyone, welcome to uh, Sleepy Reader's Comic Book Thoughts. <clears throat> Trying out a chocolate stout. I don't know if I've ever had a chocolate stout before. I don't really taste the chocolate. But it tastes good. Um, today's comic book thoughts will be about three brand new number one comics. Um, well, maybe one is not totally brand new. It's been out a little while. Um, but I thought it was interesting how different all three were. And so I thought, and I just read all three today. So I thought it would be a great or fun thing for me to talk about. <laughs> great. I wouldn't say anything. I, I would not use that word. But, um, so one of them is particularly unusual. It's like father, like daughter, um, by our YouTube community's very own comic book uno comic uno uh cat calamia i'm just guessing on how to say her last name um also with pencils by wayne brown and colors by david arvina um so yeah that's quite interesting i cat sent me a pdf and uh i will be after i film this video i will be um supporting her on kickstarter I hope to get physical copies of both of the first two issues. And, uh, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. And then I also got this weird, this is also kind of weird. There's new company called Double Take. Spring number one and then subtitled Born Again. And Double Take this Wednesday, I don't know if anyone else saw, I'm sure some of you did. This Wednesday in the comic book store had their 10 number one issues out all on the same day. Apparently they were supposed to be selling them in like this um, case where you could buy all 10 at once. I didn't notice that at my comic book store. Um, but anyway, I, I picked this one out to give it a try. And then I also got the, the big number one of the week, uh, Tokyo Ghost by Rick Remender and uh, um, Brian Murphy. No, I forget. It's not. Uh, Sean Murphy, of course, Sean Murphy. Um, so yeah, I have all three of those, and they're very different. So first off, like father, like daughter, um, full disclosure, Kat asked me if I'd be willing to review it. I don't really review things. Uh, then I would feel much more responsibility. I just, it's a vlog. I give my thoughts on things, whatever occurs to me. So my thoughts on this are, um, as you might expect, it's definitely a beginning effort. It's it's the first comic book, to my knowledge, that Kat has written and published. Um, and it's a good first effort, and I like it, and I want to read more. But it definitely, you know, has some of the flaws you might find in that kind of thing. Um, the art also, I assume, is an early effort by this artist. There's a lot of good things. Uh, uh, as I said before, Wayne A. Brown. There's a lot of good things here, and then there are occasionally things that don't quite work or that you wish had more detail. Um, occasionally, occasionally, you know, just little things. But, um, but pretty impressive art, assuming this person is also, you know, he's not a name person or anything. And so I read this in a different way than I read Tokyo Ghost, let's face it. I know who Kat is. I, I know that she's just starting experimenting with writing comics. Um, my my uh, <clears throat> biggest caveat with the art was the coloring, but it's interesting because I now, in front of me, have the PDF on my other computer screen, and I have it on the iPad. The coloring doesn't look as good on the iPad as it does on the computer screen. I was going to complain about the colorist a bit, um, I still think the colors, coloring could use some work, but, um, but it seems like it looks a little different in every different place, so it'll be interesting to see how it looks in print also. Um, oops, my microphone just flopped about. If I weren't so cheap, I'd buy a new microphone because this one is always having problems. Uh, yeah, so the basic setup... A girl whose father is the only superhero in the world. Uh, she and her mother live, the father left them. They live, I guess, out in the suburbs. And um, 
and no one knows about all this and then she starts discovering that she has powers and um there's definitely like an emotional weight here that you can feel between the mother father the mother and father and the daughter relationship the different ways that triangle works there's a pretty decently portrayed uh best friend um and the character herself feels real as as far as the writing goes and sometimes she feels real in the art like this is a very good page and sometimes sometimes she looks the wrong age or something um and there's the father uh the superhero father we i want to learn more about all of these characters which is why i definitely want cat to do more issues and i want to support her Kickstarter's kind of a weird thing where it's always like, well, how much money do I want to give these people for doing things? And this is the kind of project that I definitely feel, you know, you're literally helping Kat kickstart her career or her exploration of a career as a comic book writer. Um, there's a lot of talk about how, you know, women want to break into comic book writers and a lot of talk in general. If you want to do comics, do it yourself. And that's what Kat's doing. And I really want to support that. Um, if that interests you, I suggest you check out her Kickstarter too. Um, if it doesn't, don't. But it, I'll put a link down below. Um, so yeah, uh, I think it. Again, it's because we know her. But it'll be so cool if 15 years from now we can say, yeah, I remember when she first started up her first comic book, and I was there. Um, I think that could be quite exciting. I think she could, you know, it's hard to tell what anyone will do, but she could develop into a really cool comic book writer. Um, she's got the basic stuff here. A more, you know, a more seasoned writer like Rick Remender would put all kinds of fancy angles on things in terms of the storytelling. Um, and hers is a bit more plain vanilla, but I think that will come over time, or it will if she wants it to. Um, and my, if she, I am sure she'll be listening <laughs> and I don't want to do a real critique, but, um, but yeah, so I enjoyed it a lot. It's definitely, you know, it is what it is. It's, um, it's exciting for what it is. It's not for everyone, um, who just wants the polished experienced professionals. Now, um, Spring number one comes in this very polished professional package, really nice paper. Um, a company that can afford to put out 10 comic books in a month. Another very exciting thing about them is the price point, $250. I don't think that that's an introductory price point. I think all, I after I read this, I researched a little bit. I think all their comics will, uh, for the time, you know, for the foreseeable future, be $250. Um, in the comic book store, I was thinking of buying three or four of their new issues, or at least two or three. I don't know. I looked through them, and my, my shop wraps everything in plastic, and you have to carefully peel it off. So I looked through three or four of the ten, and this was the only one whose art appealed to me at all. The, the art and the others felt, ugh. It felt like uh, poorly drawn digital comics to me. Um not saying there's anything wrong with drawing digitally, but there's sort of a look to things that you kind of suspect they were drawing it with some kind of digital device and maybe not a lot of experience or skill with those devices. This one looks that way too. You know, it might be the coloring. It might have been drawn by hand and then colored. Um, again, a kind of digital coloring style that I'm not totally in love with. Um, but the art's decent enough. I don't even know where to begin with this because it's so weird. So this art has layouts by two people, then pencils by someone else. And I guess they went directly from the pencils because no inkers mentioned, then colors. Um, but it also, it has the story by one person, script by three people. Uh, and it is weird. So what it is basically, it's a day at the beach and I didn't realize till later, I, I didn't come back. It, it's a day at the beach in um, 1966 in Pennsylvania. So that's very specific. 
and um, and we get characters kind of monologuing. There's a very intriguing one where it's someone behind a car wheel and we can't even see them talking about things about their life and they're kind of odd, a little bit odd, the stories that people are telling. And then we get flashes from the radio, stuff about the Vietnam War and about um, United Nations and elections. But I was reading all this and I missed the fact that it was 1966 or 67. That's quite weird. See, this is pretty neat art, but it felt very avant-garde, you know, because you don't know what's going on, and you hear these monologues. And at first I thought all the monologue was from maybe one person and that we were getting, whoops, her point of view, um, that this is the same point of view of the person who drove the car, so that seemed really cool. Um, oh, and these people start skinny dipping and stuff. There's a lot of cool things going on here. Um, but then we're back in the car and then we're hearing a monologue which I eventually realized is a monologue probably not the same person because it's this lifeguard talking about one time when his testicles swelled up I mean, it's just weird and so usually I don't go blow by blow through a book but it's kind of the weird experience of going blow by blow through this I was kind of interested like where is this going what's it all about um and then this, it's just very odd how each person is just doing kind of a monologue of their, some story from their life. Really can't see any connection to anything in them except they're kind of odd. It's almost like out of some kind of modernist play or something. But everyone's smiling and looking happy. So yeah, I, I was kind of enjoying it but kind of puzzled. And then apparently some of the people are just like, um, there's st talk about problems, uh, ordinary people who seem to be in a trance, eyewitnesses and stuff on the radio. And then people are just disappearing into the water a little bit. But even that is like very mildly approached. There's just a few points where someone mentions someone disappearing into the water, but it's not like we're seeing a lot of people do it or anything. And Like we get long sequences of this guy holding in his pot smoke till the grown-up goes away and everything. So in a way, I was thinking, man, this is kind of a brilliant, odd, strange comic book from a company that's putting out ten comic books in a, you know, one week. Um... So some people are going underwater and they ask everyone to get out of the water and then someone else comes up from what, where the skinny dippers were and tells the lifeguard, uh, my friends went under and that's the end of the comic book. Um, no to be continued, no explanation. There's a map of Evans County, Pennsylvania and it's just showing, I guess, where the different number one comic books take place on this map. So every comic book all ten of these comic books take place in Pennsylvania. Um, so if you live in Pennsylvania, I think this would be particularly interesting. Um, and then another odd thing, I didn't know what this was at the beginning, and I thought maybe, well, by the end I'll understand. 1960s premieres. So it's a list. In 1960, it shows you what TV shows premiered, what hit movies there were, what were the top singles, and it goes on through to 1969, although the story takes place in 1966. Um, here's the biggest clue I've been trying to eat more vegans it looks like one of those New Yorker cartoons and it's two zombies walking down the street a zombie who's been trying to eat more vegans I guess to lose weight or something <laughs> pretty good joke actually but what is it what does it all add up to I have to say the zombie thing when I looked at the three the three other ones that I looked at in the store looked like they had zombies in them. Um, and then this zombie joke. So I thought zombies might show up in this issue. Are the people in a trance becoming zombies? It, it doesn't seem quite like zombies. So then I, I finally then went online and looked up uh, this comic book company, Double Take, and it's a company that found a loophole in the law that and discovered that... Um, George Romero's Night of the Living Dead is not copyrighted. So they can 
they're setting all of their comic books in the world of George Romero's Night of the Living Dead. And I think they're kind of showing what was, I guess Night of the Living Dead took place in Pennsylvania. And they're showing what was going on in other parts of Pennsylvania during the events of the movie Night of the Living Dead. But if it's not under copyright, how come they can't put that on the cover somewhere? How come they can't explain any of this? Maybe it would all make sense if you bought the 10-pack. Um, but it's just bizarre that so much effort and money and large groups of people are doing this and they don't, um, they don't give any explanation. It's a number one issue, you thought. But I think maybe you have to buy, read all 10 issues, all 10 number one issues to get some sense of what's going on. I don't know. I, I can't figure this out. I guess I'll buy more issues because I really kind of liked the wackiness of this. Um, but I didn't like the look of the other issues that I picked up. Um, they're definitely, you know, maybe part of how to keep the price cheap. They're, they're drawing on artists with not a lot of experience. Um, they should hire someone like Sean Riaz would be much better than most of their artists. Anyway, actually that, you know, with Cat, just to ramble on, back to Cat's comic book Uno's comic. One of, one of my other thoughts on this was, while I thought that the artist she was working with had some promise, clearly the artist is part of some company that Kat has hired or got to help her with the Kickstarter and getting the comic book going. So I think they hired the artist and the colorist and the letters because it says designed, produced by Short Fuse Media Group, LLC. Um, so it's like maybe a comic book packager or something. Um, and they did a pretty good job, but, and I hope that like maybe Kat can do a six issue story eventually and put it into a trade and all that and give us kind of a complete story. And then I kind of, since I'm on my soapbox about Kat and her comic book writing career, I hope then maybe she can start fresh. Um, or maybe she and this artist at that point will be working closer together. Um, I don't know that the artist and her are fully on the same page. And you kind of wonder when everything kind of looks digital and stuff and, you know, how much uh, teamwork goes on here. I don't really know. I'm just totally guessing. Um, but in, these, in the other ones where I saw kind of the lackluster art, I just definitely had the sense of maybe artists who weren't um, deeply involved in it. Um, and I feel like someone like Kat, and I'm, you know, I might be totally wrong. She and her current artist might be utterly, you know, really in sync. But I, I, I just hope she finds artists to work with who bring their own vision and, but whose vision syncs up with hers. Um, and so I hope, you, you know, the story in here clearly is to be continued. It's told in a somewhat um, decompressed mode so that clearly the story will take many issues to tell. I hope she does tell a complete issue and then maybe, you know, restart with some new ideas or new angles on things and stuff. Um, just the reason I think that is is because of um, she'll have learned so much and grown so much from doing, say, six issues that at that point she would want to reimply what she's learned and with something um, fresh or a fresh angle on what she's already doing if she wants to continue this Like Father, Like Daughter series. Um, another side note, on, so I keep thinking about Like Father, Like Daughter, is uh, unless I have, this is a false memory, I feel like early in my YouTube community involvement, Kat had a Q&A and I asked her, would you ever like to write comics? And I'm pretty sure she said, no, not really, that she'd like to be a reviewer. Um, Maybe I misremember that. So she's had a change of heart there or uh, maybe a change of confidence. Um, but, okay, so um, don't know what to think about spring, but I'm interested, but I don't want to buy all those other comics. Um, maybe, maybe some of the other of the... If anyone's read any of these that, other ones that were good, let me know. So Tokyo Ghost by kind of rock star comic book people in a way when you compare that to these other people whose names you've never heard of unless you watch YouTube and know Cat. Um, Tokyo Ghost has Rick Remender who's like 
got a hot hand at Marvel and in the indie world. Um, he's already got three very popular indie comics. And Sean Murphy, who's kind of blown all our heads in a number of projects, you know, for me, most of all, Punk Rock Jesus. And now they're coming together, so it's like one of these super groups, you know, when Eric Clapton plays with Jimi Hendrix or something. Uh, but I had a bit of trouble getting into it. I had to stop and start three or four times. Um, of course, my life is always full of distractions anyway, but stop or start a number of times and go back to the beginning to try to figure out the narrative voice and what was going on. Um, the Sean Murphy art is amazing, and there's all kinds of sort of detail of this futuristic Los Angeles that's all islands, um, global warming, I guess, and of the world where almost everybody is so plugged into virtual reality and other kinds of things that, that it's just a totally a drug for them and their, their uh, you know, all kind of like lost causes almost. It's like the whole world's a lost cause, or so it seems. Uh, but I didn't fall in love with this in the first issue, and it... <laughs> My old bugaboo, it's a $4 book. Um, I feel like if I'm just patient and wait like a year or two, it'll come out in a deluxe size trade with 10 or 12 issues all together and a nice hardback, a bigger size so I can appreciate the art even more and read it all as it was meant to be read as one story. Um, so I can't decide whether I'll continue with it. Um, so it was kind of like brilliant, but not involving. I, and it, it reminded me a lot of Lowe, his other uh, sort of, um, what's the word? Apocalyptic type of science fiction book. And this is just a different kind of apocalypse. And um, it kind of had, it also reminded me of Mad Max. It also reminded me of like, the most extreme kind of Batman. The, the villain seemed very much like a Batman villain, except much more murder and mayhem. Um, and that was fun. You know, all the action was fun. But I kind of was doing a mental flip between the kind of uber-violent version of Batman, if you will, and Mad Max, to a more nuanced science fiction story. Um... So, and the, it's, I think after Punk Rock Jesus kind of ruined me, and it's funny because there's a little hidden thing in here where someone in, on one of their screens has written down, um, you know, Sean Murphy hasn't been as good since Punk Rock Jesus. I feel that way. I like his art best in Punk Rock Jesus. I also think his writing in Punk Rock Jesus was brilliant, and while this is good, I still wish he could do more stuff like Punk Rock Jesus. So I don't know whether I'm going to trade weight on this or not. Having invested in just one issue so far, I would still save a ton of money, even if I buy that deluxe hardcover edition, which will probably cost me $25 or $30 uh, when it finally appears. Um, or pay even less for the trades. They'll probably be the inevitable one, uh, $10 trade, which I can get for $5 discounted somewhere. So... Um, but it is, this was so different from the other ones. Uh, Cat Comic Uno's was so straightforward. Th this, uh, spring was so mysterious and weird and unwilling to explain anything. And this was so, such sensory overload, overload of detail, of violence, of depressing future. Um... Yeah, I probably won't resist the individual issues. I don't know. We'll see now what I do. So, yeah, thanks for listening to me ramble probably much longer than I thought. Oh, my goodness, 24 minutes for three comics. I thought I'd go for nine or ten minutes. So um, I am going to upload this now and at the same time go uh, 
pledge on Kat's Kickstarter for her issue two of um, Like Father, Like Daughter. And I'll talk to you all later. Bye.